Okay, this is our counter EMF battery test. Um, and it's to do with previous videos on the experiments we've been carrying out with the uh, spinning magnetic rotor. And um, it is said that the rotor is inducing a counter EMF in the coil, which is what is dropping down our current draw. But um, as you would have seen in the videos, and we introduced that. Um, spinning rotor with the spinning magnetic fields or alternating magnetic fields our um, output power remained the same while our input power dropped so introducing this counter EMF by way of this battery um, we should see the same thing if it is the uh, counter EMF induced into the coil that is doing the same thing um, as the rotor is doing that is increasing the efficiency so um, here I have wound a coil. Uh, the little winding is just a, uh, a um, trigger winding. I was going to use this coil for a pulse motor. But um, the main winding here, we have a start here and then there's a hundred turns on it. And then I've um, brought the windings out so we can get a center tap. And then it goes back in another hundred turns. So we can center tap um, the main winding of the coil. And I've done that so I could put a um, resistor across there and measure the current flowing through the coil. But in this case, we're going to introduce our counter EMF battery and we're going to see what happens. So first we need a benchmark to work with. Um, the circuit as before has been triggered by the function generator. And um, we'll be starting at 1 kilohertz, 12% duty cycle. And, um, 8 volts peak to peak on the uh, trigger side so um, we have 4 volts triggering the um, transistor with a 15 ohm resistor in series to the base and the function generator this little meter here be reading our battery voltage uh, this meter here is reading the voltage drop across our 1 ohm CVR on the input as before and this meter here is reading our supply battery voltage. This meter here once again will be reading the voltage drop across our 1 ohm CVR on the output and this meter here is measuring the voltage across our charge battery. So this enables to get a, an electrical power in and electrical power out which apparently this counter EMF battery is supposed to increase. Um, the efficiency of. So uh, first we're going to fire it up um, I have a clip lead bridging the coil at the moment, so um, it will be just acting as a standard coil. So we'll do that run and we'll get those um, P and P out ratios and efficiency. Then we'll introduce our counter EMF battery into the system, which at the moment is 0.935 volts. And we'll see what happens to the power in and the power out, and also the voltage across the battery. Alright, so I'll click on the function generator, fire the system up. Um, and at the moment you can see we're using 23.7 milliamps with 12.55 volts. So I'm going to write that in. 12.55 volts at 23.7 milliamps. I always write everything else down so I can um, do all my calculations after the experiment. Our output is 12.25 volts at 14.9 14.9 milliamps. So now we can obtain an efficiency and a quick look at those numbers it would seem that this um, rough old, old coil made out of um, old laminate core pieces um, is more efficient than the one we are actually using before quick number crunch so um, anyway we'll turn our function generator off so what we're going to do now is remove our clip lead place our battery in here and our little meter just turned off ok and um, we're going to run our test once again so I'll switch it back on still our 12.55 volts 22.2 milliamps, that is the input.
22.2 milliamps. So um, we've uh, dropped our input current by 1.5 milliamps. Pretty good. Okay, so our output now is 12.25 volts at 11.15 milliamps. Unfortunately, unfortunately, um, our current has dropped um, by 12, 13, 14, about 13, nearly 14 milliamps, uh, 4 milliamps, sorry, 3, 3 milliamps, um, that is 0.9, so it's close to 4, 3.8, something like that. Um, and as you can see, our battery is being charged. So, whilst we reduced our power in with our um, counter EMF and we are charging the battery slowly, um, we went down in our power out also by marginally more than the power in decreased. So, um, what's actually happening there is that power hasn't actually gone missing, um, it's now charging this battery. So, um, without um, putting a uh, resistor in there, um, we don't really know as to uh, how much, well we do know how much current is going in the battery, it's 22.1 milliamps, um, probably at 1.65 volts. So, um, that would equate to the power we've lost on the output. So all in all, the counter EMF battery has made um, no increase in efficiency at all to our inductor. So um, the counter EMF argument is just about null and void. All right, um, I'll go and crunch these numbers. We'll come back, have a really quick look at them, and um, then I'll get this video up and posted. Alright, so here's the results of the test we just carried out without our CMF battery um, basically in series with our uh, main coil we had an efficiency of 64.62 to electrical power in to electrical power out and um, this is about 24% more efficient than the last coil we tested so uh, quite surprising seems um, laminated transformer cores are much better than the uh, one I made um, back in 1999 which is not surprising really um, with our CMF battery efficiency to um, power in power out into our charge battery dropped to 48.89 percent so um, once we introduced our CMF battery in series with our uh, main coil um, we got a 15.73% reduction in efficiency as far as um, power in from our supply battery to power out to our charge battery went um, so this 15.73% is now what is charging the battery that we put in the uh, middle of the coil to produce this counter EMF that was supposed to increase the efficiency of the system in the first place. So um, if we take into account the losses um, that you incur when you charge a battery we can safely say that this or doing this has reduced the efficiency of the overall system. So. Um, all you have to do now is work out um, how to induce that counter EMF into the coil without the use of a battery that's going to reduce our output and uh, then we're laughing. The thing is we've already done that. We've done that very thing. We don't have to um, include a battery in the middle of the coil to produce counter EMF. We don't drop on our power output to our charge battery 
but we do decrease the power input to the system simply by having that rotating rotor with the alternating magnetic fields on it that is all we added so the system is supplying the energy to spin the rotor that creates this so called counter EMF that reduces the energy input whilst the energy output remains the same so you work that out and um, this argument about the spinning rotor and the uh, alternating magnetic fields not doing any work all you have to do is tell us how to increase the efficiency of the coil uh, without that rotor that's that simple and uh, that's the end of the argument alright thanks for watching I'll get this up and posted let you have a look at it and um, there you go that is our uh, little counter EMF battery experiment done but I'm quite surprised this coil is so much more efficient than that yucky wound thing up there alright uh, we'll see you next video let the discussion continue can magnetic fields do useful work